And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Monday, 6 p.m. It must mean it's time for The Bonfire. Connie Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder, and all the way in sunny California, IA, is Big J. Okerson. It's 3 p.m. over here, yeah. baby, and I'm feeling good. Oh, different hey, worlds. There, Zoom. <laughs> different worlds colliding. Hey there, zoo visitors. It's me. I'm three hours in the past. <laughs> Welcome to Time Zoo. <laughs> time. It's this is the morning time. Time warp zoo. It's true. That, that's how frequent time travel is going to become in the future. <laughs> Soder, Harry, Harry, quick. What was the 5 p.m. lottery number? I can't tell you. It will distort everything. Jay, Jay, you must un- you must find my son. Tell him Come I've with me if you want to live. Tell him I've left the amulet under the floorboard of the living room. God, that Terminator song so emotional. I yeah, you know that's. I told you that's my knock. Whenever I walk into a place, I do the. Yeah, it's better. It's better than the fucking hacky. That one. I, I do shave and a haircut two bits. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. King, king. Oh, that must be Big J. He already plays the two haircuts and the bits and the stuff. I have been on a journey. Yeah, it dude, has been you, insane. You've been, uh, I, I just started counting on my hand. You've been in four cities in five days? Or am I wrong? Four, city, four cities in four days. Mm. Uh, six planes. Six planes. So many planes. They, so... Many I'm, I'm gonna start calling you the aviator, planes. dog. <laughs> You're the aviator. Yeah, I was at Rock on the Range last night. How was that uh, in Columbus, Ohio? Chili peppers were awesome. I guess Anthony Kiedis fixed his gut rot. Why? Oh, why? Because he was gone. He he missed some shows earlier this week due to gut rot. Something with his gut. I get. He it. doesn't have the kind of stellar medical care like you getting your endoscopy today yeah i got an endoscopy today because i got gut rot actually i have gerd which is chronic acid reflux because i suffer from organ trail diseases <laughs> <laughs> i'm a, i'm a going we, out to montana to find gold <laughs> what were some of those diseases in the oregon trail dip, uh dysentery which is diarrhea dysentery that's what you die that's, that's you die from diarrhea yeah your wife just died from splinters yeah that's what it was she had a headache and then she died two hours later <laughs> two hours later she was gone early on set dementia <laughs> you're like she was 19 years old they uh so I, I had to go in i went to my gastroenterologist and they were like yeah well, let's go get you an endoscopy done just to see how much because you know i lived all of my 20s i just lived like uh, like someone that was running from something. I just drank and smoked cigarettes, and I never ate well, and I yeah. think it just jacked up my stomach. So I go in for an endoscopy, and they put you completely under, which is awesome. By the way, the anesthesi- oh really? It knocked you out? Oh, completely out. And the anesthesiologist was like this hot thirty-eight-year-old lady. So she I just was like, tits banging in your face while you were getting put out. No, she like she was like wife hot. Where you're like, uh, I, I saw a ring and I was like, yeah, good for that guy. Like you're like a smoking hot <laughs> anesthesiologist. She can just put you out if your parents come. If your parents in law come over, she can just knock you out up in the guest room and come too when it's <laughs> over. Uh, that's funny because like as you're going out, you just start saying like inappropriate things to her because yeah. you're just out of it. You're like, oh god, I don't want to motorboat your lady. Yeah. <sighs> Hey, while I'm out, feel free to flick it around. What? <laughs> I won't tell. Oh, hey, I'm gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull out the head. You do yeah. whatever you want. I, well, because I had to lay on my side for the endoscopy. It'd be funny if I just shimmied my pants down just below my balls and my butt <laughs> at the last second yeah. as you're counting backwards from ten. I go. I'm getting ten. Sl- I'm getting. Z- I'm getting sleepy, and I just do the little thing where I just wiggle <laughs> out of my pants. Just go. Nine, for it. eight, flop. Yeah. Seven. See in my six. See in my dreams. Angel, uh, hey, hey, sweetheart! Before I pass out, we know it gets a lot bigger than that. <laughs> I'm a grower, not a shower. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, <laughs> just keep in mind, I'm a little bit nervous. <sighs> I, uh, but what's so funny is they put that oxygen thing on me and started running in the um, the, the like the anesthesia is the anesthesia. I don't know what they're called. The medicine, the anesthesia, anesthesia. That's a great. <laughs> how is there not a stripper named Anesthesia? 
I'm sure there is. There well, also because it would imply she puts you to sleep. Yeah, well, that's good because she gets you all boned up and you come. Then you she go to stays sleep. Fu- oh, I was going to say she just stays fully dressed the whole time and is not a very good dancer. <laughs> and bad at conversation. She's like, ah. She, she, she just holds the pole and ticks back and forth like a metronome until you pass out. <laughs> or she, yeah. Or she just tells you other conversations she's, she's had with people where you're like, I, I want to go to sleep right now. I'd rather go to sleep than listen to this. <laughs> I like getting sleep like, yeah, take it off, whore. <sighs> Coming to the stage, it's anesthesia. <laughs> She's going to attack your anesthesia. She actually had a great, hey, everyone. She had a great upbringing. Her father encouraged her to write poetry. She's she only a, does this for the money. She literally is a self-made woman. <laughs> She's a feminist that thinks boners are aggressive. Keep it going for anesthesia. Hey, everyone. Anyway, Hello. so my mom's visiting. She just does <laughs> shitty hack girl comedy. So my mom's visiting. That's always fun. You guys know how that is. Looks like it's the couch for four days. She brought my brothers, or should I say her cat. Oh. Then she looks through her notebook for a minute. Uh, so oh, they, yeah, so this happened. <laughs> so they put me under. They fucking completely put me under. And I, I did, um, so I, the only time I've ever had an endoscopy done before, I got mm-hmm. it done at Bellevue when I had no fucking insurance and this is like 2009 is a psych ward yeah. is a psych, was it was it an involuntary endoscopy they said you, they had you held down you're like no don't bury me no. i'm not dead we gotta get in there and check for the bad thoughts what kind of medicine do you practice what kind of old-timey <laughs> medicine they uh um, he has those old sharp crazy tools dude it's funny man because like when you're at when you're at bellevue so like bellevue is a non-profit hospital in the united states so you can go if you don't have insurance this was before obamacare or anything you could go and if you brought your pay stubs, they would put you on a program where it was like $20 for everything. Like you just saw a doctor and you just gave $20. But you were there with like that waiting room. You saw some shit. Like you saw like real people with like major medical problems just waiting. At Bellevue. Out. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Because you're just like sitting there waiting there and there's like a Peruvian guy with his eye leaking out of his head. And you're like, <laughs> you're like I've got tummy pains. <laughs> and so you're like... <laughs> You're just that sitting. crazy thing where there's like there's like his whole head's wrapped in gauze yeah. and there's a knife sticking out of the gauze and he's like oh please God help me and you're like well sometimes I eat flaming hot Cheetos at night and then I wake up and my tummy hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, guy's telling you he goes, they say if they remove the knife, my brain will fall out. I got to keep the knife in or at least just the blade. Uh, <laughs> but they so I would go to Bellevue to get like this, you know, it's it's medical attention for poor people and I. Had no money yeah you suggested i go there and i was like i don't want to see a bunch of weirdos hey, dude but i'll tell you this because all it is is it's like young doctors who are at like nyu medical school or whatever it's kind of like their residency and that's why it's so cheap you can go do it why are you, sh- are you showing me a picture of an endoscopy jacob i want to fight you jacob he's just showing me a medical picture of an endoscopy that's freaking me out already hey hey here's what you had to go through. hey remember when they were remember when that sweet angel was throat fucking you with that camera <laughs> um so the first time she i do it good. first time i do it they give me local anesthesia they don't put me completely under so i'm kind of awake and they're just jamming that camera down my throat and i'm like oh I'm like making that noise while they're doing it. I can like I remember all this. I'm like Ugh. Jacob, could Jacob, could you play uh aggressive deep throat sounds? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And the doctor the doctor had his hand on the back of your head the whole time. But it's Bellevue, so it's just a fucking garden hose with duct tape around it over my mouth. He's just shoving it down there. It's it's a GoPro on a silly straw. Yeah. He's like, Let's hope this gets the shot. This thing's got lodged in the couple guys we've tried this on. So yeah, battery di- battery died on the way down, man. Gotta pull it back out and start hey, over. You guys can keep a secret. That guy's gonna have a GoPro in his stomach for a good three to seven weeks. Um so we're doing it. What's funny is right before they give me the local anesthesia, I knew it was local anesthesia, so I thought I could just go home by myself. And this Jamaican nurse is like, you have to, she was like, you have to have.
and somebody pick you up. You can't be going to sleep without nobody picking you up. And she was like screaming at me. And I'm like, I don't, I'm sorry. You're Ross Cloud rude boy. <laughs> you got to have yeah, a chaperone to bring you. Yeah, be a real boom clot. You're not taking no one home. I'll be smoking you around. Be Here young. come the old stamper, murderer. <laughs> you call my sunshine porn, Simon and saying, come get you now. <laughs> I got the right to punch you, to keep you keeping it warm. So they, I couldn't find anybody. Vecchione was out on one of his vigilante missions. Yeah. <laughs> urban, I think he was out to an urban vigilante. Yeah, and I and this is before they give me the local anesthesia. They have to have me call somebody. And I was at the cellar the night before, and Schumer was like, "Hey, if you need me to, I can like." I told her I was getting it done, and she's like, "Someone's gonna have to pick you up." And I was like, "No, no, 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 it's local anesthesia." She's like, "Someone's gonna have to pick you up." So I'm at the hospital, and I text Schumer. I'm like, "Hey, will you come and get me after this endoscopy?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'll come down to Bellevue." So I go under, they give me the local anesthesia, then they throat fuck me with the garden hose, which I remember. I just remember like them just jamming it in and my whole body moving. Because it's like, <laughs> you know when you watch surgery videos and they're just so rough with the people? I do. But, but I, picture, I picture you're having the, the visual shot of like, remember when RoboCop kept like, when they were first making them, that he kept sort of waking up? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah, what like. like, going. You just see another guy jamming a, a, a straw down your throat, and then yeah. you pass out again. Then you wake up, and it's people going like, oh, this looks bad. Then yeah. you pass back out again. Oh, my God. What's happening to him? And then I come back, and I'm like, I've oh. Never oh. Seen this, I've never seen this kind of reaction before. Oh, my God. I don't know if he's going to pull through. So then I just come, t- I kind of come to at Bellevue. Because I wasn't really never completely out, but I was kind mm-hmm. of out. And I come to, and I remember that my clothes and my backpack are under the hospital bed. So I just rip out the wires. <laughs> I just rip everything out of oh, me. Jesus. And I just, was it, did you have like an IV? No, I, I had, they took the IV out. So when I, when I kind of came to, there was the cotton thing on my arm. But everything oh. else was just like, you know, like the thing on my finger, the monitor on my finger. And like uh, the little things on my shoulder and chest. So I just tore them off me. And got completely dressed and walked out with my backpack. And uh, I'm walking. I'm sorry, th- I made you explain. I'm sorry, I made you explain that because in everyone's eyes, myself included, uh, I thought you were saying you, you had to pull that like that big tube that goes into your stomach. Out. Oh no no no! no. I like, woke up. I'm out of here. Ooh, you can't keep me in here. <laughs> I gotta go find some junk. I'm itching. Ah, they're like this guy will not stay down. He has a camera in his stomach right now, and he's fighting it. I fought, uh, but I got dressed. And I started walking around the hospital, and my phone's blowing up, and it's Schumer. And I pick up, and she's like, hey, where the fuck are you? I was like, I'm in the hallway. She's like, yeah, they're freaking out. You just walked out of the room. So they didn't even know I was gone. They just went, That's to, my, great. They just went to my hospital bed, and I was just fucking out. Sir, please, sir. You're, I'm an adult. Yeah, I'll fight all of you. You saw the insides. You saw my tummy insides. <laughs> You saw my guts. You know what I'm made of. Man, Who wants a piece? You know I'm all guts. I'll fight all of you. <laughs> and, and then they, uh, they know, uh, but this time, this morning when I went, I was like completely gone. And that sweet, sweet angel uh, put me under. And then I came to, and it, this is just, you can tell I'm an alcoholic. Because I came to, and I was like, that was fun. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> I woke up and I go, these drugs are awesome. And the lady was like, yeah, I guess. And it was like, mm hmm. You know what I'm talking about, sweetheart. <laughs> you mind buying me another one? She's like, excuse me? I want another round. Put me under for two <laughs> hours. Cupcake, if I was three years younger, the things I did, it's like yeah. not even a long stretch of time. Yeah. Sweetheart, let me tell you, if I was three years younger, the things I'd do to you. If this was 2010, you'd have to tear this right out of my arm because I'd be jumping at you. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> So that's what it was. So my endoscopy was like, it was way easier this time and just way better drugs. That's what insurance gives you. That's great. I, I you know, the only thing I, I haven't had anesthesia, but I got the, uh, you've never been, things, you've never been put thing, out yeah, when I was, yeah, when I was younger, I had a, uh, my tonsils out. Uh, I don't remember that at all, but I remember, I remember picking root beer like an idiot for the flavor. Okay. And, uh, and just passing out and waking up. That's such, like a fu- that's such a fun. That's such a. I love that you woke up. What a kid's decision. To hold on. Root beer. Yeah, two things. Number one, I like to they- taste root beer. Why don't I, why don't I smell root beer for a while? <laughs> I love that they have. It might as well be Jaeger. Yeah, they have flavor fucking uh, narcotics. To like, oh, oh would you yeah. like the roof? Have you seen the video of uh, Jacob? Type in Google "little kid Dubai was lit." 
Type in this video. Oh. Jay, you should type it in on your end, on YouTube. I am. Um, this- no end over here. Um, what you call it? Dude, there's a... Uh, but when I went to the dentist not too long ago, when they were taking out my wisdom teeth, they gave me all the Novocaine. But then they gave me, he goes, you want the gas? And I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. I'll give you- I, said, I, never did, I never did the gas before, but he said the whole, he was great. It's, it's, uh, it's my manager's brother. It's his whole family. You know, Kimowitz? Yeah. It's his whole family are dentists. Oh, that's so how, I go, do I, they take 10% go their, of, of their dentist bill? <laughs> they are. No, but they're awesome. Like his family is awesome and they're great dentists. But, uh, like he has the mood so steady. They started giving me the gas and I was getting like trippy. And then he turns on like, he has like Spotify on his thing, and so all I remember is just sitting there getting my, like, it's a, again a violent movement of like jerking. You know, he almost has like yeah. his foot on your forehead while he's trying to rip your wisdom teeth out. <laughs> and all I hear in the background is like, the lunatic is on the grass. Yeah, oh the soft rock. The lunatic. No, he's like putting on like like trippy. So it's like the doors. Oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> like this is playing, and I'm just like I have a blank stare while my head's just being jerked around violently <laughs> by pliers. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, oh man, he got a song, and he's like, you can't talk, don't talk, please don't talk, I'm just, sorry, just, I'm sorry. Great. just, just feel it, just feel it deep down in you. <laughs> you just hear fucking metal on bone, and you're like, ah, <laughs> hey doc, would you say I'm comfortably numb? Hey, you know what's crazy about this is, it doesn't taste like root beer. It just <laughs> tastes like my whole face is fucked up. Take them all out while you're in there. I'll start over. I'm going to start talking just like just, <laughs> just whenever I do it. Take them all out so I can have that sweet whistle talk. Are you feeling it at all? You hurting? Dude, here's what I did. I got home and smoked a joint and watched Game of Thrones. It was awesome. That cures whatever ails you. Dude, so type in, Jay, uh, we're going to play it on our end, but type in Dubai. is lit. It's this little kid coming out of surgery. And he's just super fucked up on anesthesia, and he just oh I've seen I've seen it before I've seen that before uh, dude whenever they there's a lot of videos of oh, yeah. uh, there's, people there's the little kid from it, the dentist who's like is this gonna last forever which the is dentist kinda... kids weird have you seen the new one where uh, the girl comes out of like some kind of dental surgery and she's all groggy and weird and her brothers drive her home and her brothers uh, made a CD they put in the car <laughs> no way. of a of a new of a news report saying people that need to get out of town and get quarantined. <laughs> Because a zombie apocalypse has happened, and she's got, she's like, a fucking oh, zombie apocalypse. Hold on, we're gonna find that video. But Jay, here's the Dubai is lit because I love that this kid just becomes like a seven year old black guy when he comes out of surgery. It was crazy. Yeah. Why you tell me Schley? Because the sick people here, you have to be quiet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why are you talking like this with this weird accent? Why? You because talk- Dubai people were all up in my grill and my boy Rocco got out and knocked them out cold, man. Who's Rocco? Rocco, my boy, you know? He looks like Alfred E. Newman, and the fact that he's talking like this is he's a ginger kid, and he's like, Dubai was lit! I love that they, it makes me believe that he Everything. has his... Like, Everything he ever wanted to be came out in that thing. That's who his uh, inner soul uh-huh. is. Oh, you conjured my past life. You gave me so much anesthesia. I went back to the black man that was murdered in 1982, and then I was born. And he's from Dubai? I don't know. Wait, here it is. Dubai. Over in Dubai. Rocco was like, yo, bro. And I was like, yo, Rocco, go we'll sack him. And Rocco was like, and I was like, yo, Rocco, you get that ass, man. <laughs> Did you put the camel in the Camaro too? Oh, the camel! Me and my camel on like the weekend. We were going around and around and around, and we were killing people, man. Right. Jesus, Sorry. that got dark quick. Why are you talking? To me? Don't tell my lawyer we kill people, man. <laughs> Dude, this kid's like thirteen and he knows about legal representation. <laughs> Dude, I love him. Yeah. I love this. I'm going to adopt this kid. Uh, you know what? I'm going to um, adopt him and drug him every day. So he's this guy. I don't want this regular. Just keep him awesome. Yeah, you guys want to come over and see my? You guys want to come over and see my freaky ginger? <laughs> <laughs> I keep him tied to the bed and just all jacked up on fucking drugs. I keep, yeah, I keep him in a trunk till people come over. They get him all whacked out. He's like my, free. He's like my gimp, but I don't fuck him. I just drug him up. <laughs> like, like, like yeah, one of those chimps. That you know what it reminds around. me of? Do we have to see uh, Jacob? Can you pull up? Um, I want to see that girl with the uh, zombie apocalypse. Yeah, but bring up the. It reminds me. Remember the scene in Weird Science when uh, yes. uh, 
Remember that? When he was like, uh, so I was in love with this yeah, little eighth yeah. grade bitch. She's like, crazy in love. He's like, crazy, insane. Man, I was nuts for the woman. Find you know what I'm talking about, Lou? You've seen it, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, Anthony Michael Hall, right? Yeah. He was great. Oh, Jacob's playing advertisements that aren't ours, Jacob! If we don't get the money, you don't get the money! Tribulation. Yeah. Guy and, uh, you know, my folks, they really, really dump on me. They really do. I say you guys get along with your parents? <laughs> The movie's so good. It is so I guess good. You guys moved out by now, and though, I'll huh? say this, and I don't give a fuck. I like the TV oh, yeah. show. S my D. Don't say that. It's Did. pure. <laughs> Christine said she only liked the uh, TV show. She didn't know it was a movie. I also, I wish you were here because then you could uh, you could back me up when I say that uh, William Stevenson apparently in Weird Science. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it looks like a mix of William Stevenson and Wendell story, Pierce. Man. Here it is. Last <laughs> year, I was insane for this crazy little eighth grade bitch. Crazy? Insane? Insane? Crazy? I was nuts for the woman. <laughs> now, you got to believe me. I'm saying, I'm telling the truth here. I'm speaking to you. I mean, I was nuts for the girl. And what did it to me was these big titties she had. For 13 year old girl, man. She would not have to worry about no titties for the rest of her life, boy. You know, she was set and she was looking good, son. That's the truth, baby. I called every night for like a month. I mean, I'm talking devotion, That's man. Every damn night? Every night, Mitch. I ain't playing with you. On the telephone? Man, what are the boys talking about? The boy about? talking about on the telephone, man. <laughs> what the hell? Goddamn, we know there's a telephone, boy. What the hell thing I do here? But he hung up on her. Oh, you didn't hang up on her. The chick with those big, big titties? <laughs> man, you know, no, that's who this, the kappa. That, you know what the bitch did to me? That's who that kid is. That's who that ginger kid is. He becomes yeah. Anthony Michael Hall from Weird Science. Him and his boy Rago. Did you find the zombie? The zombie thing is like, it's a little long, so you have to kind of skim through it, but the girl's just trying to, to rationalize in her head. She's like, with all that shit in her mouth, she's like, a fucking zombie apocalypse. Well, that's the whole thing. You said when you got put out, you woke up scared, right? Um, When I was a little kid, though, yeah. It's, it's so weird. I came out so happy. I woke up and I was like, "Hey, everybody!" Like it was like the end of uh, like it was the end of uh, "It's a Wonderful Life." Well, everyone's <laughs> here. You got yeah. the Jamaican nurse, and you're like, "Oh, and look who!" It, it was all a dream. Oh. It was all a dream. Oh. Thank God. It was a terrible thing. I had GERD, and I I couldn't eat spicy food late at night. You were there, wow. and you were there what too. A- what a gross sounding affliction to have. I'm pretty sure I have it too, man. I really get if I have like. Even any kind of like salami or some kind yeah. of like, like 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 at nighttime. Oh yeah, like it it does it feels like you're uh like semi burping fire all day every day. I've woken up with stomach acid in my throat and it is terrifying. Yeah, no, me too, dude. I, I, I probably woke, have it. You, you I woke you're up much more responsible about doctors. Oh, well, I just got insurance though, but I got insurance about a month ago though, and I'm 38. <laughs> I, you know what's funny though is I'm a raging hypochondriac to the point that going to the doctor is the way it's like going to the strip club for old, most guys. Like when the, when they were like tending to me today, I was like, Dad, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm the, oh that, yeah, that's my version of being the guy in the strip club who brings flowers for the stripper thinking he's in a relationship. That's my version of it. When I go to the and I'm like, you guys are touching me. You really can't. I, was, I told him, I was like, can you guys put a camera uh, down my throat and up my butt and have a meet in the middle and tell me what's wrong with me? And they go, we could probably just do an MRI. Yeah. I'm like, go. oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, I'm kind of, oh, well, I'm a big I'm, cave diving guy, so if you could do both of those things. <laughs> you know what? Can we do an MRI? I'm a three input man, so if we can yeah. do the MRI and uh, I'll chug <laughs> some and take some in the shitter. You wink at the doctor, you go, well, lucky for you, I'm a dirty girl. I like it three ways, huh? So why dirty don't we do all? Girl. Uh, dirty, uh, we dirty found girl. zombie girl out of, out of it. Oh, this is great. Okay. Oh, so this is, this is the fake CD they're playing. Disease control in Washington, D.C. has issued a viral outbreak warning. State and local officials have reported cases of high fever, nausea, death, and even cannibalism. Stay in place until further notice. She's kind of like looking at it, freaked out. She's got that drugged face. Oh, yeah, she's zonked. Oh, oh, you're driving like a slug. Get to the house. Hold on, hold on, mom's calling. 
Yes. Hey. Oh wait. Pause. Pause it, it for a second. Alert. Yes. Pause it for one second. She's just got her mouth slack jawed. Like. Yeah. Oh. I, just, I, just, I, I just want to prep you because it's a little hard to hear, but I want to prep you for what happens. That's so great. In her thing, she they actually say they can't take both pets, the dog and the cat. So she has to pick one. Oh, that's great. And she's like, and if I, I think she's like. I forget if it's a dog or the cat, but she's like, the other one sucks. <laughs> like, she's the greatest that one guy. Uh, so they got the mom in on it, too, because the mom's calling in on a cell phone, on the cell phone. Yeah. They're saying it's a weird virus outbreak. Is okay, she... okay, well, I'm pulling the driver right now. What not the U.S. Marines? I can't leave if I'm going now. Okay, there's Barry. He's got the Jeep. Don't move. Oh, so they're going through with this. This isn't just a fucking car ride. They're, like, making this girl live this thing. Oh, yeah. Cabot, a garden hoe isn't what we want. We have guns. Why are you putting garden equipment right, I'll go get the guns. in the car? She's yelling at him to go get the guns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, this is how you use it. Safety's right here. Pull this. Try. I need you to see you do it, okay? You gotta hold it up if anything comes. Oh, hold the weapon. Hold it, up. Hold it up. What are they making her? They're making her hold things and training. Okay. I mean, it? she's like super okay. fucked up on drugs. Boy, well, so they leave her alone. You for me. Give me a knife. Ah. <laughs> a knife. Uh, so we can only take one pet. Which pet? The cat or the dog? The pet. You okay. idiot. No. <laughs> what do we do with the dog? He's the worst! He's already dying! Just leave him! Okay, we will, okay. You know what's funny? Okay. You know what be funny is if you came home one day and, and this was just on and it was just you and the dog in the house and you're like, hey, <laughs> so I said some stuff I'm really regretting right now. Hey, champ, you know I'm just messing around. <laughs> Someone left a you poo here. <laughs> oh, well, turns out they were just joshing me, so <laughs> I'll see you later. I don't I don't come out I yeah, it's weird that I don't, I didn't come out of it like fucking super zonked. But I I get Yeah, I, I don't remember. I said my I was, you know, I was literally 7 years old when I got my tonsils out, so I don't remember. I just remember coming out and like crying cuz I was like a kid, but like Yeah, you're scared. I don't, I don't I don't remember how groggy or like, you know, not in tune with the world I was. I'll tell you um it's kind of funny you bring yeah, we're talking about this because what I had was I just did 3 insane days of travel. Yeah. Uh, we said all those cities and all those things. I had, I believe it's called a waking dream. So what is that? What the hell happened? I uh, it was the third day of travel, second city, seventy two hours on without exaggerating, three hours of sleep. Um, and I'm I'm laying in bed. I was like, you know what? All right, I only had about an hour and a half before I'd leave for the airport again. But I was like, I should probably try to get a little bit of sleep. And I'm laying down with my head like it propped up in my hand watching TV. Or not watching, like watching Netflix or something on my computer. I'm just laying in bed. Yeah. And I guess I started to nod off. And in my head, I convinced myself that Fenoya was coming in my room to try to scare me, like as a joke. Okay. And I hear, yeah. ooh, dream weaver. Yeah. And I wanted to tell him, what if there was a different state between <laughs> yeah. dreams and sleep? I wanted to tell him that, like, get out of here. You can't scare me. I know you're in here. So I sort of sat up, and I physically couldn't open my eyes or say words. It was terrifying. I just imagine you, like John C. Riley and, and Step Brothers, where you go, the clown has no penis. Just uh, no, I didn't. I couldn't say words. I wish I would have said something. So wait, like you that. just sat up. I wanted to say. I was trying to say, stop. I know it's you. I know you're in here. I mean, I remember all this like very distinctly. And I, and I and I was trying to open my eyes and I couldn't open my eye. Like it was, a, I physically couldn't do it. They call it hypo, hypnagogia. Oh, there's no big titted fucking uh, wife nurse to handle that problem. Oh no, no way! It's the experience of a transitional state from wakefulness to sleep. Dude, it was so fucking scary. Um, and then when I fi when I finally like crowbarred my eyes open, I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And then you realized like, you were above Mike's your own body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's when I realized I'd been dead for ten minutes. Oh my god, I'd stop breathing. 
<laughs> it's all going to be in my autobiography, Dirt, the Motley Crue story. <laughs> It'd be great if, like, uh, if Fenoya just drugged you and he gave you, like, a misery where he, like, put the fucking plank in between your legs. He's like, you know, Jay, I'm getting real sick of opening for you. Yeah, that'd be funny when I finally got my eyes open and I was like, what the hell am I doing? This is crazy. I just go back to sleep and you see Fenoya around the corner and just go, Whew. that was close. <laughs> I thought he was out. I didn't see that one coming. He's like, I got to wait about 15 more minutes before this rape. <laughs> yeah, that sedative didn't catch in, but I'm going to, he's going to be my power bottom by the evening. He's whisper yelling at a doctor friend that gave it to him. Yeah. You told me one tablet would be enough. Cliff, it's my son of a bitch almost woke up on me. Yeah, well, I didn't guess his body weight precisely the way I should have. <laughs> so I'm going to need more. I need you to mail he must it to be me. He must be very dense. I'm telling you right now, I can't get it. We're leaving tomorrow. This guy travels nonstop. I can't pin him down. <laughs> Just trying to get him one place so I can drug him up. He's going to be oh, like, oh, yeah. Why don't I talk him into it the old-fashioned way? I know what you're saying. Who's got the time? Who, Cliff, I don't have that kind of time. I'm married and I'm a comedian. I've got a... If I want him to be my fuck rhino, I have to have it happen now. <laughs> I'm juggling a lot right now, man. Don't, don't you understand we're on native land? There is no law. <laughs> there are no laws. <laughs> we're at an Indian casino. Uh, don't you understand that it's only the law of nature? Give into the earth what you take out. I'm going to come in him. Then he's going to come in someone else. And so the cycle repeats itself. <laughs> For I have heard great things of a giant brave in his room. For he enters the land of sleep, but never walks into that realm. Instead, he fears the bald-headed brave in his room, bringing the fear of a crow while he sleeps. Hey, amigo. Just lay there. It's okay. For you will see I'm here to protect you, amigo. The spirit of the white, bald vulture head. For he will come for our big, brave warrior. But he will fight. Through the lake of dreams, he will swim to the top and become the dream. You're safe with me, friend. Hey, friendo. <laughs> let's get these pesky jeans off you. <laughs> That's a great fanoia. Hey, pally friend, amigo. <laughs> Why don't oh, we take off hey. this? Oh, let's get this heavy denim off, huh? It's stopping us from really being pals. <laughs> oh, those chomp, those Tommy Johns look awfully itchy. Oh, boy, they sure are tight. Let's let some air hit those legs, huh, palo? Wow, huh? You're all man down there, pal. <laughs> You're going to feel hey, some Chief pressure. Bu hey, Chief Guy, buddy. <laughs> hey, that looks nice. I wonder if it tastes nice, boss. Let me give oh, it a lick. That looks yummy. <laughs> uh, so this was while you were working the gig in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, the casino down there. It was uh, it was nuts. Though. But I mean, the, the Nash I did Nashville. I did... um. The Wild West Comedy Tour was awesome. We did a What's Your Fucking Deal there. How, how was, was Did Artie come out for that? No. Okay. No, Joe DeRose. Joe DeRose oh, did audience shampoo! microphone. Shampoo! Shampoo! Did, did you see the thing with the two little girls yet? Uh, fucking, it's my favorite thing ever. And, and I'm sorry, it was like a crazy weekend, like a bunch of people tweeted at me, and I'm glad you brought it up, because uh, Camper tweeted us a video of two of his daughters doing Joe DeRose impressions. It's so great. This I, little girl's going, shampoo, I, shampoo. And the other girl's laughing, and then she gets a couple out. And DeRosa and I did At Midnight last week, and um, he was like, dude, that video's awesome. And then he didn't even know the backstory. He, when he was on Bonfire, we never explained to him the one-word impression of Joe DeRosa. That's really hilarious. We didn't even tell it to him? No, it's just this running gag, and he has no fucking clue what was happening. Shampoo. Shampoo. Uh, he did audience microphone. Uh, he did awesome. It yeah. was really great. That's it was, great. It was a great show. Uh, Ralphie May was on. Mark awesome. Normand, Ahmed Ahmed, um, great. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. It was a it was a stellar show. Dude, the dude. whole the whole night was great. It's a cool festival, man. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn watched the show for a bit. Hey, that's awesome. And in my mind, Nash when I saw him go in, I was like, when I watched him walk into the comedy club, I was like. Well, here it goes. Let me go solidify my spot in old school part two. And yeah. then when I got, when the show was over, I was like, what do you think? And, and, and Justin, my agent was like, oh, he left like a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> you always, uh, uh, uh. it's always funny because you really, uh, like no matter, comics, we're, we're all, comedians are all pretty self deprecating to the point that we kind of uh, know that shit ain't going to happen. So even, even when it does, it's still awkward, but we do dream to the point, like we dream big of like, well, Vince Vaughn's going to see me do my crowd work. He's going to be like, why don't you just take 
take it easy because I'm going to shoot you to the top of Hollywood. Yeah, but you know what, though? I mean, like, for someone, and by the way, I was, I was with him last night. Uh, in Nash- I was actually in Nashville with him and Rock on the Range is our, our good friend, of course, Nate Bargatze. Yeah. Who is just, I mean, out of this world hilarious yeah. comic. So I, I take nothing away from him at all. But when I say that he had that really cool. Yeah. He was just milling around the comedy clubs, doing what he can do, and then Jimmy found just saw him one night, and was like, "This guy's awesome," and just like started get taking care of him, like getting him like his name out there. Great, which is fucking awesome. Which so it can happen. It can happen. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a really amazing. That was that was like a game changer for Nate. But ninety eight point nine percent of the time, it is they've left halfway through the club. It's kind of like the story I was telling you <clears throat> off air. I was in Madison at Comedy on State, easily one of the best comedy clubs in the country. Uh, and I was glad I was there when the special was premiering. But then Friday night, um, Chappelle was at the Orpheum Theater next door. And uh, I'm, I mean, Dave Chappelle's my favorite comedian of all time. I, you know, like growing up, he's like, to me, what Pryor is to a lot of people. Like, I just grew up I loving him. You were a, I, th- I always thought you were a Bobcat Goldthwaite guy. You know what's weird? I was actually a Paula Poundstone guy till about 2011. <laughs> and then I just realized shoulder pads aren't in anymore. So I'm going to go. I was... A- I was a Rudnut, the fan club of Rita Rudner. <laughs> oh, fuck. Who was the... God damn it. Julie Tenuta. I was going to do a Julie Tenuta. <laughs> no, Judy. Judy Tenuta. Judy Tenuta. Damn it. I was like... But I fucked up because I couldn't think of the name. Cause Suck on that, pig. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Chappelle's at... Um, he's at the theater next door, and I'm like, I just wanted to go watch the show. And then the manager of the club tells me, uh, Joe, who's fucking awesome, Joe goes, hey, dude, Chappelle was like hanging out at the club, and he said for you to come and hang out in the green room at, at the Orpheum in between your shows at Comedy on State on Friday night. Which is like, to me, again, it's like the same thing you thought with Vince Vaughn, where it's like... um here it goes. Can uh, I change my life? <laughs> but also, it's like, oh, my special's coming out this weekend. My comedy hero wants to hang out. Everything's coming up donkey-headed gringo. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he must... Oh, Chappelle must have heard the special's coming out this week. Probably wants to chat. He probably caught the Vulture article that Che did I, <laughs> and I did, and he probably wants to talk comedy. And it's so funny, because you start building it up to where I imagine myself walking over there. He's like, ah! Oh, it's Dan Soder. Oh, you're my favorite. Like in my head where it's going. Oh, oh. I haven't been able to tell you how much I idolize you. Oh, man, check this shit out. I dug your dad up, and he's here to say <laughs> a couple words to you. If your dead father wants to talk to you. Now, I got that kind of money from season two of Chappelle Show. <laughs> I invested it in reanimation, baby. <laughs> I'm bringing back the dead. That's what I've been doing. That's what I was in Africa for. I was finding a witch doctor to bring me back dead people. And I found your dad. <laughs> And he's he's sorry for leaving. <laughs> and, then <they're> like, <laughs> and, then like, and then so I just imagine that. And then uh, in between shows, Anna, one of the owners of Comedy on State, walks me into the alley of the Orpheum, and we're like waiting outside the stage door. And she's like, I just got to check with the tour manager. They're going inside to make sure everything's cool. And uh, his opener, Mo, was there, who's awesome. And we were talking to him briefly. And then the, <laughs> the, the, the stage manager comes out. He goes, yeah, uh, Dave says come and hang out after the next show. And she's just like standing in that alley oh, and you're like so funny dude uh well uh, you know okay <laughs> Turn i assume it. you did not i yeah. assume you did not go back i did no uh i didn't well i did the show and then you know uh jason hoffman and ronnie you know them uh two of our sure. amazing fans drove down from minneapolis so we went and got dinner well like we were gonna go get dinner with them after the second show i'm not gonna blow off fans just to fucking be a fly on the wall for Chappelle not to talk to me Oh, so you can sit in a corner while he talks to other friends? Yeah, but also, that, this is hilarious. I just imagine him being around the corner of the stage door going, <clears throat> Is he outside? Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at his face. Ow, oh, he thinks he's going to meet me. No, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. He's, he, he's going to introduce your, like, wrong. Yeah. Or he's going to be like, hey, everybody, this is Dave Soder. Hey, uh, look, it's Dan Soder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like it's actually soda. My bad, man. I didn't really pay that much attention. Take your pants off. I bet everybody that you have a big pussy. Why would you <laughs> say that, Dave? Stop it. I think Did your you... comedy is as funny as getting drilled in the head without anesthesia. <laughs> oh, the word. I love that he he said for you to come over, and then I was like, ah, later. Yeah. And it's funny. In, in his mind, though, it's like he has no idea... How big it was. Like, 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 like the weight that you put on yeah. him telling you to come over yeah, yeah, yeah. and going over. And that's what I'm saying. But so it's, he has no idea where in your mind it's like, 
this, like you guys said, you're already fantasizing about your, <laughs> your blossoming friendship. And he's like, and that was one of the things he just said. And right away when he said it the first time, he regretted it. He's like, ah, why don't him come over in between show? Ah, I don't want to see that dude. I don't know this dude. His, his headshot's terrible. I don't know what his <laughs> act is. This is going to be terrible. And then like, how does uh, Chappelle look, man? He's all jacked. He's beefy and weird looking lately. He's jacked. I mean, dude, I watched his show. It's fucking is hilarious. Jack, is but Jack the wrong word? No, he's dude. He's got. It's he's, almost like bloated in some way. No, way. no, no, no. He's back to being as George Takei would say, musculature, musculature, musculature. Yeah, he's, musculature. He's big. Um, no shit, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's big. And then like, uh, it was great. Like watching him in a theater. It's always funny when you watch someone in a theater just murdering and then you go into a comedy club and you're like it's the best comedy club in the country but like the audiences are unbelievable and their laughter doesn't get that high so no matter how the show goes you're like i bombed and they're like you murdered and you're like i was watching chappelle next door murder that's murder did he do that joke where he said something mildly amusing and then runs around the stage and smacks himself in the leg with the microphone yep that's my favorite one. <laughs> well, I enjoyed oh, y'all the show. See, y'all, see, y'all see that movie with that guy last week? That motherfucker crazy. Clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, hey, y'all. Uh, uh, who here saw 12 Years a Slave? I, just I was 13 years bored. Aha. Oh, I, woo, you I like your Chappelle sounds like an old prospector. <laughs> We doggy, y'all want to get the golden in their hills? I'm telling you right now, there's a spine of silver running down one of them damn hills, and I'm gonna find it. And all you are gonna say that Big J was crazy. <laughs> hey, it's me, Dave Chappelle. Uh, y'all want to get all that? Oh, here come the cavalry. <laughs> uh, we gotta take a quick break. Uh, uh, you're across the country for me, but I feel like you're right here. I'm always right there with hey, you. Hey, what music do you want to do? Because we can't talk about this off air. Sure, we could have. Do, okay. Do you want to do East Coast? <laughs> do you want to do East Coast West Coast battle rock? Yeah. Well, today we should do. We do East today. We do West on uh, Wednesday. All right. We'll do East Coast rap today. You pick the East while you're there. Yeah. And then you can pick the West, son. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. Hey, campers. Tuesday, May 31st, there's a huge comedy event coming to NBC. It's the premiere of Maya and Marty, starring Maya Rudolph and Martin Short. Maya and Marty are two of the funniest and most versatile performers around, and now they're teaming up for the next great comedy variety show. If you saw them on SNL 40 special, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Their moment together was one of the most hilarious moments of the show. You know that Maya Rudolph can imitate almost any female celebrity and sing like them, too. And Martin Short's character is a comedy legend. Lawyer Nathan Thurm, Jackie Rogers Jr., and of course, Ed Grimley. My favorite's actually Three Amigos, Ned, Ned Niederlander. It's that kind of comedy gold they're bringing to NBC primetime. My and Marty is an hour of comedy sketches, musical numbers, and big, big celebrity guests. The show also features SNL star Kenan Thompson. You won't want to miss the premiere of Maya and Marty after the premiere of America's Got Talent with new judge Simon Cow. Tuesday, May 31st, only on NBC. This is Cheech Marin, and you're listening to The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. And I have a gift for you when the show's over, and it's it's kind of smokable. Wu-Tang Clan coming back. Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Lou says that's protect your neck, Big J, but I don't think that's protect uh, your neck. Oh, that shit was dope, yo. Oh, I'm, working on, I'm working on my Chappelle. <laughs> it's, still pro, it, it's still Prospector J to me. We. Okay, that's a good old Wu Tang sound. Right, you just sound more and toothless and more lack of Chappelle. Wee! It's me, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I'm in New York. Big J is in L.A. getting ready to tape Ari Shafir's. Uh, this is not happening. New season coming soon. That's listen. That's news for down the road. The big news, buddy. And I'd like to know if you had an emotional moment at all. Hmm. Uh, when it's official, dude, that's a that's a a big thing. I know I'm gearing up for mine and, and how emotional that's going to be. Your hour special just came out, man. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, buddy. And I know everybody there is proud of you. Yay. And Jacob, Jacob, true to form, is not going to let an event go by. Ah, I just saw it. Ah, Jacob, you're a good man. 
Cookie cake. Cookie cake. Cookie cake. cake. Oh, man. I'm going to text Sister Cassine. What a fucking great. What a mensch. And I gave them a two, I gave them I gave them a two minute speech about no border, no frosting border. Ah, uh, Jacob put his foot down at the cookie Minimal place. Minimal frosting. So now there is definitely. No stars? No stars, I said. You know what's great about that? It's good to know that this Sally Field cookie cake's going to have cum in it because Jacob pissed off the employees. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. They, def they at least fucked the batter. Oh, man. Jay, I want you to hear. It's past six o'clock, so it's okay to eat cookies now. But not where no. you are. Not in the land of the beautiful people like you are. I can't. Get some. I'm a I can't. I can't do it. Why? Oh, because you got you got television to make. Because you Hollywood. I'm Hollywood now. I'm trying to stay off them carbohydrates. Hollywood. Yeah, dude. I'm it, trying it, to get off those carbohydrates. It's a nice little one-two punch uh, with May and June on Comedy Central with um, my my hour special, not special, and then in June yours live at Webster Hall coming out. So that's gonna be fucking bad. And I know. I I know I texted you this week and everything, but I can't tell you how much I'm proud of you, dude. I think Thanks, that's buddy. fucking, it's awesome. And Thanks. I, uh, and again, I was there at the taping. I'm going to watch it, uh, either tonight or tomorrow officially that I've stopped running like a maniac. Yeah. Now that you're settled down in one place for uh, three days. Yeah. I'm going to be sleep. Me and, me and Christine are staying at, at Michelle's house in separate rooms. Oh, no. Why? We're but separate that, room in it. But no, you can't say that on air because now it's going to change when I do the sleep number read. Well, but we're not we're not on the, we're away from our sleep number. Oh, okay. Yeah, Don't worry. Right. What happened? If we, ever, if, we ever, if we ever go our, if we ever go our separate ways, I'm taking the sleep number. The sleep number comes with me. You should just saw it, you should just saw it in half. Take your side, your soft <laughs> yeah, take, ass side. Take take your stupid forty. Yeah. I'll be over here living it up on my seventy five, <laughs> sleeping like a barbarian, <laughs> like a warrior, a man of the people on seventy. What <laughs> happened? Why are you mad at Christine? Why are you guys sleeping in different rooms? Because Michelle has a lovely home. Michelle is a wonderful host, and She's I've been a here wonderful room. host. She um, is. She, cool she is basketball. A wonderful, wonderful. Cool basketball court in her backyard. Oh, you can dunk all over that thing. I'm you just dunk on it. Fucking jacket. I'm doing honey dips. Call me the Vince Carter of that backyard. Oh, I just, just drop step hammers. Yeah, I'm, I actually do the crusty, uh, the crusty white guy run stop jump dunk as opposed to all one motion cool black guy dunk. You, you know what? Great. You know what? Great. Info Michelle lays on me like when I, as soon as I get to her house today. What she just she just walks in with a Mexican boy. Oh, is that her new lover? Has she taken a <laughs> lover? She she took a lover. She took a young Mexican lover. Uh, no, I mean a young boy, like eight. Oh, okay, nine, no, maybe that's highly illegal. Ten. It's hard to tell. They're always malnourished. Hey. Uh, and him and his brother, she's semi fostering them on the weekends because they they're citizens, but they're gonna get sent back to Mexico. What? Something. The one kid has this is an abusive. Be in ten this, is all, this, this is in five minutes of me being in the front door. She starts crying. She goes, "It's just such a terrible story." And the other, the other son has a hole in his head because his father got man threw acid on his head. Wait, like, what? Holy Christ! That's, that's a Viking crime. That's like how you punish people when you're like, "Fuck it." Uh, I love that this is going to be a Susan Sarandon movie in ten years. Well, the best part is, Michelle's like, what's going on with you and Christine? Is it just like the thing where she said about the guy's dick being bigger than yours? And I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. And she goes, yeah, it is a big deal. Anyway, I'm taking care of Acid Head and fucking Pneumonia Pablo over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, dude, that's hilarious. She's like, oh, that's what's a, it's a miscommunication between you and your girlfriend. Well, these little boys had to fight for their own lives in a dog fighting circle. What? <laughs> Uh, they were treated as they lived their lives as pit bulls for the first five years of their life and you, lived in cages like veal. Are you familiar with the story of the Jungle Book now just t adapted into a major film? Well, they're basically Mogwai. They were raised in the jungle <laughs> by a talking bear. However, we don't believe it was bears. We believe their father just kept them drugged up until they saw talking bears. <laughs> they were brought here in the carcass of a donkey. Um, so anyways, they stay here every other weekend. Anyways, what's going on with you two? Lovers quarrel. No, here's another great one. So, Christine has her drunken, uh, doof, uh, thing. Yeah. Where she sings, uh, where she writes a love song for some other guy's dick in front of me. Yeah, she wrote a Hairway to Steven ode to some dude's piece. <laughs> a Hairway to Steven? I meant to say I don't hair. know if we can let that go. Ah, yeah. Well, you know what? I blame it on cookie cake. 
because I'm, I'm. I mean, hair with a seven. hair with a hair with a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do do that. I couldn't do that if I tried to do that. <laughs> and she's buying a hair way to Stev. That's what uh. That's what that Mexican kid's got going on. He's got a hair way to Steven with that acid burn. Cause I'm buying a hair way to Steven. And I got the oh, hair way to Steven. I was trying to eat cookie. I was trying to eat cookie cake and be slick and talk and make a joke and it just didn't fucking work. Hey y'all. Hair way. That's her hair way to Steven. Or whatever you call it. <laughs> or whatever. Anyways, you ain't gonna eat all this cookie cake? Um, so oh, what man. happened? She wrote an ode to so, the, some other dude's dick. Oh, it was a freestyle. It was actually a freestyle she's rap like, she wrote uh, because it was all, it was all uh, at the dome. She's like, let me drop these bars real quick. Hold on. Uh, uh, pull, your then, you know, pull your pants down. Pull your pants down. Yeah. Show him. Humiliate him right in front of the other guy. Put your dick Look how little that is. Look how little that is. Oh, look at this big old monster here. I need two hands to hold this one over here. Gee, look at your little... Flicking it. Yeah. So, all right. So you're mad at her, and this happened uh, in D.C. Well, you look, the reality is frustrating. Um... It, it was fine. Kind of got brushed under the carpet enough to just be like, eh, whatever, you know. No. I, I definitely wasn't uh, looking to, to fuck or anything or do anything like, uh, ro let's call it romantic or even slightly affectionate. Yeah, for, okay. But I'm like, I'm gone for the week. You know, she left, came into to, to LA. You know, she's working on Ari Shafir's show. Yeah. And uh, I was gone for the week. I was going to be, I wasn't with her for like four days. Uh, all good. She, uh, she came to New York, or she came to L.A. Her first day, she goes and hangs out with some fucking other blow pig that used to go fucking suck fuck dudes together. I mean, that's that day is, one. That is the most negative sentence I've ever heard of a description of a friend of your girlfriend's that I've never... You just... I don't know. Or who gives just, a shit? Yeah, but you just set the bar at, like, just trash... Yeah, yeah she meets up with some fuck pig skank whore <laughs> yeah. slut bag. Anyways... Some gelatinous slob cum dump. Yeah, anyways, um, it turns out this girl was her sponsor and actually got her out of some dark times. But anyways, this fucking slow blow suck pig... No. Quite the opposite. Literally got her blowing dudes for coke. Okay. Um, what's her? Oh, yeah, so, oh man. What a what a. Fuck you know, it. I, I swear to God, I thought you were gonna go. What's her? What's her name, dude? Yeah. Is she around? So is she is she on Facebook or like is Christine friends with her? Can I find her? <laughs> so you know, oh. get her number. So then, so here's the thing. So I even said that I, I land in L.A. Uh, Eight forty in the morning okay. this morning. I, and I said before, I go, hey, if you don't want to run to the airport in the morning, whatever, it's fine. I'll just get an Uber or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'll take a cab. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm going to come in. I got two alarms set. I blah, blah. I'm going to bed early. So I, and it's like, this is our moment. Remember the story of my dad having his one moment to fucking like nail it with his six-year-old granddaughter? Yeah. And his first words to her were, you must be little Elizabeth? Yes. Elizabeth. You um, must be he, a little Elizabeth. This is actually, this is actually funny build up to what happens too with this is because then, uh, while well, she's like, she goes, no, I'm gonna pick up, I'm setting two alarms. She's getting plenty of sleep. She got home early last night, went to bed at a relatively reasonable time, I guess. And, uh, while I'm at the airport getting ready to come back, I bump into Tony Roberts, who you know I love. Hilarious comedian. Yes. Uh, Tony Roberts, who I just love. And I show Tony Roberts to Christine a lot. And she's never met him before. He's been in L.A. since she's been in New York. And uh, but I, she watches all of his sets and stuff with me. And like you know, we're both fans of his. And I'm I'm buddies with him for a long time. Bumping him at the airport. He's on the same flight as me. He was at the Columbus Funny Bone when okay. I was at Rock on the Range. Okay. We're coming back together. I go. I go. Oh, dude. I said my girlfriend and me watch your shit all the time, man. I said it's so good to see you. I go when we land. He said he's going to get a rental car. I go. Oh, dude. Let us. We'll drive you over to the rental car place. You can meet my chick, man. It's so cool. I'm even singing her praises. You know, I mean, he's, there's no reason to tell him about this nightmare that's uh, been the last weekend or so. I'm just like, hey, come meet my girlfriend. She's cool as shit. You know, blah, blah, blah. She'll be so excited to meet you. Uh, man, I land 30 minutes of calling her and calling her and calling her. She's still asleep. Nothing. No, Fucking blew no. it. One no, chance to do it no. all right. Oh, blew no. it. Well, what happened? Blew it huge. But what happened? 
What happened? I jumped in a cab. She jumped in the car to come to the airport. Oh, I just no. Kept her- That's the worst feeling in the world is when you fuck up and you're trying to make up for it and the person's already done an action that completely negates you trying to make up for it. So you oh, get no, in the but- cab while her... Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, well, she was coming down. I'm feeling I got panic the panic ca- right now. I got in the cab and I just kept texting her that I was at the airport. <laughs> oh, you jerk. So she drove to the airport and then she's like, where where are you at? I go, oh, I, I had to take an emergency shit. I'm going to be in here for a little bit. So just kind of chill outside. Ah, oh, you're a dick. You just made and her way out her, there. And then I told her to go to Starbucks and come back for me. And she went to Starbucks and came back to the airport. 45 minutes of this, I'm just sitting at Michelle's house on a lawn chair, <laughs> smoking uh, you, cigarettes. You are, uh, you, I, you just turned into the villain. I convinced, I convinced her to park, I convinced her to park at the airport in the paid parking for a little bit to wait for me. How, uh, first and foremost, how the fuck are you still mad at her after you did that? Cause that is, huh? even, for her missing an alarm, that is more than evening the score. Um, yeah, no, whatever. Just fuck her. <laughs> Gives a shit. So wait, it, it's still not you. You're still not over it. Are you still upset that she missed picking you up at the airport? It's just too much at once, man. That's like, and she's back in. She, she's uh, my she's love. Showing, she, she's showing low value. Do you know what I did for her in the past week? What did After you do? she told me that my that some dude had a nice donkey dick that she loved fucking in front of me, do, and had do? a bunch of strangers and fans. What did you do? I paid make- for her. She had a middle seat going out to L.A., and I paid for her fucking first-class upgrade. Ooh. That's what I did. And then you, you know made, what she did? Yeah. She forgot to get me from the airport and fucking wrote, wrote an acoustic piece about some other dude's cock in front of me and all my fucking friends and yeah, but, friends and fans. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah she, she, wrote a, she wrote a sonnet about another dude's dick, but then you made her wait at a the airport. A sonnet's not long enough, dude. This was an opus. Yeah, then, but then you made her wait around the airport, and now she's on a no-fly list because they think she's a terrorist for showing up and scouting the LAX airport and leaving. Dude, if I could somehow get her name on a no-fly list, I would <laughs> yeah. do it. That is, that's the most, that's the weirdest form of abuse ever. It's just to get your partner on a bunch of no-fly lists. Uh, yeah, have fun bussing around the country, dope. <laughs> yeah, you're like John Madden. You can't take a fucking flight. You got a fear of flying now. Oh. So are you still mad at her? Sure, yeah. I'm going st- to start uh, hashtag forgive Christine. Yeah, go for it. I'm thinking Have at it. Side. Maybe you know what's great about the, you know what's great about the internet for every person that goes, hey man, give her a break. She's not she's not all that bad. There'll be someone who's like, yeah, fuck that fat so it's gonna make her feel worse. So please start that start that hashtag. I feel I think positivity could win over negativity, and you guys can be but, back in love by Wednesday's episode. Oh, I love her. Okay, I definitely love her. Oh, thank God. I just think she's an idiot, garbage, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> okay. But also in that tone, that's love. <laughs> that's an understanding. Sure. That's a love the oh. two Mexican brothers that live with Michelle. I had. told you that. I told you my thing for the thing is it's, I'm, I'm, I'm freezing her out sexually for several months. Because of the dong thing? Yeah. Really? That's going to cost her any of your... St- yeah. Wait, how is that? Uh, Merkface doesn't, oh, under- yeah. Merk doesn't understand it. What were you saying? I don't Merk? understand how that's punishment. That's punishing yourself, too, Jay. Oh, please, dude. I could jerk off the guy. Dude, uh, you know, how old are you, Merkface? 36. You oh, wear wow. it. Wow, you wear it well. Thanks, man. Yeah, you really do. I thought you were in your 20s for sure, because I was going to say, oh, you know, come on. I, I mean, at my 38 years old, dude, I could just, I, as soon as I jerk off, I'm like, oh, yeah, who needs to waste time doing anything else? True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I like that you're like a sexual camel. Dude, I, 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 you're like I a am sexual a, I camel. Am, you can just go. I'm a big believer in cutting off my nose to spite my face, because fuck that nose. <laughs> you really are. It's amazing. It's almost like uh, it's perfect, because it's a quality I don't have, and that's what makes us so powerful together as a duo, is you have the ability. I, just, I tell you, my, my thing is always, like I said before, it's not like I don't have like a revenge is is the wrong word. Maybe it's the right word for it. I don't know. I just have like... Yeah, <laughs> your part's if, Sicilian. If, if, I, if I feel... If I feel... If you make me feel shitty about something, I just want you to feel... Way shittier for way longer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I think I'm. Because I think I'm a giver. Yeah. I'm a good person. You would have been I'm a ag- nice. You, I'm a doer for people. So, it's like I said before. It's that same thing. When um, did I used to tell you the stories about my ex girlfriend? 
uh, Cheryl, her mom, like her parents just hated me because yeah, yeah, I was yeah. older. This was the one that was the, this is when you were with the girlfriend, you were with uh, the Christmas presents that promised you the PlayStation yes. 2 and then you just blew Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Her parents just hated me. Her mom hated me. Okay. And it was just because, and it's just because I was older than her, which I, which uh, and honestly, in hindsight, I kind of get. That said, when I would ever try to like make like amends with this lady and just try to reach out, like extend an olive branch and be like, just not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And really try to be like, you know, hey, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry if, you know, uh, I, 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 I always like, you know, abided by their rules for her and all that shit. I never like got her like to be doing anything shitty to them. You know what I mean? I wasn't convincing her to be shitty to her parents at all or anything or like do anything bad uh, necessarily. But I am, um, I would, so I would try to once in a while to speak to them and, it, you know, it'd be like a whole like, Oh, hey, Mrs. Sleater, you know, I really, blah, blah, I just love your daughter, you know, and I want her happy, and I try to be a good, you know, positive reinforcement on her, and blah, 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 whatever. And then, she, you know, and I'd be so nice with that, and it's kind of like a, fuck you, you fucking loser, like shit like that, and then that just makes the hostility so much more, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So you have to understand, this situation now, it's like, uh, uh, financially, I'm taking care of a, a, a whole bunch of people, you know what I mean, in many ways. And, um, you know, she came down to fucking D.C. on, like, my dime. To hang, she wanted to hang out and see D.C. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, I paid for her to go there to fucking sing some song about some other dude's cock in front of him and a bunch of my fans. <laughs> I love that you're making it sound like it really is like an old school gather around and let me sing you a story about a penis I once had in a previous day. Dude, it was my so opening big it was rippling with veins. <laughs> my boyfriend Jay's tiny penis was asleep in between his rather large thighs. This one was laying across his thigh. Listen to the story <laughs> of the deep dicking I took. <laughs> As his own cockhead pierced his belly button. Ah, they said it took that the flight of a dragon. However, my his boyfriend, name. little piggly wiggly dick, was asleep in his own bed. <laughs> and I knew this because I watched him dream. He was asleep. While the other, <laughs> he was while the other steed's navel was soggy with pre -cum. I knew this was my one chance to get a ribbling good fucking... <laughs> Uh, a good old-fashioned rogering. Now, rogering. I say we start hashtag forgive Christine. She makes mistakes, but she loves you, Jay. It's cool. I'm hashtag it up. Listen, every person who wants to hashtag forgive Christine, I want you to understand how I came into this situation starting in the D.C. weekend. The first words of conversation that I knew there was a problem was... A room containing Christine, the guy that I know she fucked before she met me. Okay. Whatever. I'm not making a big deal about that. I don't care. I have no problem with that. Did they, did they greet each other as hello lover? <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, don't, I, don't I, was, I wasn't. I wasn't there for the greeting. Good to see you again, love. For, I walked in the. I walked. I walked in the room. He was there. I sent him in there though. I told him to go say hi because I said go. she was here. And you knew that they had hooked up. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't weird. Oh, but I'm a fucking. A no, dude, I'm a fucking adult. Who okay. gives a shit? All right. It wasn't like it wasn't behind my back or anything. Yeah, I would still be a little weird about it. I don't know. I'd probably make a joke. Oh, dude, I'd have to make a joke yeah, about it in front of both of them for it to be cool. It's, yeah, but uh, me and him have never talked about it before. Okay. Or do we have to? It's not. Yeah. It's not. If it makes sense, technically, it's not any of my business to get involved with him about that. That's nothing to do with me. I was. It was before my time. Who gives a shit? Okay. Um, do I wish that that wasn't the case? Of course, but I'm saying like you just try to be an adult and get whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. By the way, after this night, he is two, we saw him the next two nights also. By okay, the way. all right. Um, you know, circumstantially. Yeah. Um, so it was cool. It was just the damage was done. So tell me. So so then yeah, you walk in thing, the green. So I, I walk. I walk in the green room where there's her, this guy, this girl, who. Me and her, me and Christine were supposed to hook up with that night. Ooh. And uh, two fans who are literally wearing Legion of Skanks t-shirts. Okay. The club manager. Yeah. Um, And I think and another uh, a, a guy from CAA who was drunk and his friend who's a fan. So there's probably like 12 people in the room. Eight, maybe. Okay. I open the door to the green room. Christine goes, oh, great. Now two guys that raw dogged me are in the room together. Hilarious. And I was like, uh-huh. I'm like, what? Yeah. 
<laughs> and then she starts going like, yeah, I used to try to tell Jay all the time that it wasn't even all that good, you know, that it wasn't good. But you know what? It really was. It really was very good. No. Are you... And, uh, I want... I, I, is this true? She was like... 100% to do... I mean, verbatim, she goes, it was really good. And you know, and the worst part is, and the worst part of the whole thing is, is that his dick is, is bigger than Jay's. And that's like, a, that's like the worst part of the whole thing. Like... And not one positive thing about me at all. Jay's a very generous lover, but what he lacks in size, he makes up with in commitment. And then, and then went to bed that night telling me that she wasn't drunk and yelling at me that why won't I just talk to her? That because she's not drunk and she wants oh, to talk. Oh, because maybe I mean, you were doing one of your Abu Ghraib techniques where you put her in a fucking <laughs> Japanese asylum where it's just a white room. You're like, you think in here and all you see is white. And Christine's like, help me, I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, that's what I should have. I should have. I should have. I should have put her in like. I should have made a steam room out of the bathroom. Yeah, you're like smoke. you sitting here. She just got mascara running. <laughs> I should have steamed apologize. her out. Yeah, guys, I don't know what's up with Jay, but whenever he gets into a fight with his girlfriend, he does old torture techniques. <laughs> <laughs> he does highly manipulative. You ever see that movie Prisoners? Yeah. I just turn the shower into a scalding hot fucking thing, <laughs> and then you just lean against the plywood like he does, and just like. Ah! Well, maybe now you won't go talking about his pecker. Oh, it's fucking so funny. Well, I, I think you guys can. I think you'll get through this storm. Love on the you think so? Yeah, I believe. Oh, that. here's the. You want, you want to hear? You want to hear a little insight uh, in your old in your old buddy Jay's life? Absolutely, because this is now you're getting uh, you're getting romance request, Dan. Hey, if you're out there, <laughs> hey, if you're out there, Delilah, you like Delilah? Yeah, I'm the male Delilah. Hey, if you're out there and your uh, your girlfriend pisses you off, just just do what my buddy Jay does and have her come to the airport and make her wait there for 45 minutes before you realize that you fucked off about an hour ago. Hey, it's Dan hey. Soder. Welcome back to Spiteful Romance Requests. If, if your girlfriend starts singing a song about two hand and some guy's hog in front of you while you're sitting there, this is the perfect song. Um, here, you want to hear a little insight into my life? Sure. Here, yeah. on what's going on? This talking about getting it from all angles. So that's the Christine drama going on. And then, as always, what happens is I just get a, a picture sent to me from Carla that shows she's listening to the bonfire. And I guess the the write up for what we're talking about says Jay and Christine. And I just get a, te a text with that on the thing and, and Carla writing the word really. So, oh no! I, I'm not even with Carl anymore. I have to answer to her, and she, it's it's really quite a little corner I've carved out for myself. How did did you have you worked it out? What have you worked out? Like what happened with with, what with, do you mean? with Carla? Did you did you quiet that beef, or is she is have you not gone through that one yet? No, I mean she's a what? Uh, who knows, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I'm oh, not sure what's going on. That's, that's I'm not sure best. what's going on anywhere. No, I mean, me and Carla are like, well, no, we're good. We're in a, we're a good thing. But like, she gets like, she gets pretty wired up about like uh, Christine stuff pretty regularly, and you know, whatever. I don't know. Who gives a shit? But I like that. You know what? what? What's your mental? Te can we come up with a mental technique for Carla? Can we fake your own death? <laughs> Obviously, it's we'll impossible. tell. We'll tell Isabella so it doesn't damage her. But <laughs> okay. Isabella, Teddy's gonna fake his own death. <laughs> Hey, listen. Hey, Isabella. Here's the deal. Your mom kind of pissed me off, so here's how we're gonna get her back. Uh, I'm honey, I'm gonna be. No, you know, it's funny. Carla doesn't. Carla actually doesn't piss me off ever. She's just uh, every five seconds, I feel like she gets pissed off at me for something that I'm unaware of. That it's, uh, it's yeah, but that's like something wrong. I've done that. I mean, that's like most relationships where all of a sudden you just get a text where the girl's like, "Hey, can we talk?" And you're like, I, "It's about something I did that I don't want to talk about." Well, no, it's kind of, it, with the more situation is like, she, I mean, I live with Christine. Yeah. She knows I'm with Christine. She has another baby with another guy. It's like the relationship in that form is done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And she, ha and we have dinner together, all of us, like weekly pretty much. She sees Christine. Her and Christine get along great, which is fantastic. I yeah, do yeah, love yeah. that. I think that's an awesome thing. I, I enjoy both of their company. I enjoy both their company together. But I end up, it's like just that thing when you, when you remind it, it's like, Oh, yes, like, you know, me and you are getting divorced, and Christine's my girlfriend. It's like, oh, shit. She like, it like yeah. almost reminds her, goes, oh, shit, that's right. That is what's going on. Fuck this. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to do that. Jacob's saying we got a break. Is there a problem, buddy? Or 
Oh, he's Frank. <laughs> he's like Brian, Carlos outside banging on the doors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is there a pro- uh we gotta go, Jay? I'm just gonna say this real quick. Thank God you're in L.A. Because, oh, when uh, we come when we, when we come back when we come back, Car- uh, Carlos, we, 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 I'm gonna talk to. When we come back, I want to talk to Elizabeth in St. Louis, who, it's, it's a girl's opinion, says that I'm being petty about Christine and get over it. So we'll take... And also, we'll take, we're uh, going to need to take a break because Carla is strapped to the gills in ammo standing outside the <laughs> studio. I think she's planning a, she's planning a Columbine-like sweep of the serious sta- uh, studios, so I should probably let, add I, 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 I don't think I have a good impression for Carla. It should be something like very Hispanic because she's yeah. Hispanic. Like, let me in the doors, hey! There it is. We're going to be right back. It's the bonfire. We all know sleep's important. Want to know how to make your sleep great? Yeah. Come to a sleep number store. The only place you'll find the sleep number bed with sleeping IQ technology. And right now, you can save $500 on their Memorial Day Special Edition bed with sleep IQ technology. So you have the knowledge to adjust for your best sleep. My sleep number setting, 45. Big J's, 70. A rock hard 70. Because he's got that ice cold conscience. Conscious? Conscious. <laughs> My sleep IQ score last night was something. The sleep number se- <laughs> the sleep number bed lets me choose my ideal firmness and change it. And because it adjusts on each side, it's the perfect bed for couples like Jay and Christine when they work stuff out. <laughs> when <you> add- <laughs> no, I just have a different number for each cheek. <laughs> uh, when you add the optional sleep, sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep so you know how to adjust for your best night's sleep. Whether it's adjusting my sleep number setting, cutting back on caffeine, or exercising more, you know it's working. Because Sleep IQ, the Sleep IQ inside the bed tells you. My sleep number setting, like I said, is 45. It's going up. Try to be more like Jay. Hurry in now and save $500 on a Memorial Day special edition bed with Sleep IQ technology. You'll only find Sleep Number at a Sleep Number store. No better sleep. Find your Sleep Number setting only at any of the 500 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com and be sure to tell them that Jay and Dan sent you. Crackle, crackle. Yes. This is Rachel Feinstein, and you're listening to The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soderson. Your simple words That's- just don't move me. you minor. We made you. You're all playing game. Don't uh, serve to be a player. Don't make me have to call your name out. Your crew is featherweight. My gunshots will make you levitate. I'm only 19, but my mind is old. You're like one of those kids, you're like one of those kids with his headphones on where you're like, hey, we, we, but the rest of us can't hear what you're rapping. It's Mob Deep. Oh, Mob. I hate when that happens when people walk by you. Yeah, I know. Mob Deep on East Coast Rap Monday on the Bonfire Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. I'm in New York, and Big J is in L.A., so all day I'm picking East Coast Rap, and of course I work with the Queensbridge Killers, Mob Deep. Oh, and think it through. Or oh, the next rhyme I write might be about you, son, you shook. Scared to death, you scared to look, they shook. No such things halfway. What's the matter, dog? You in Paris? This guy's a gangster? His real name is Clarence. Oh! And Clarence lives a whole bunch of Paris. Clarence, Clarence have a real good marriage. Oh! This guy don't Damn! know. He's sure. Damn! No such things as halfway. I'd be the guy at the uh, I'd be the guy at the battle rap that goes. You know he was just quoting Mob Deep. Okay. Anyways, hi. <laughs> I mean that's not really that's not really reciting anything. We just yeah, I mean, that's not sleep. it's not original. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm actually his I, friend from Nine Mile. It's a little farther what, away. I'm doing okay. What's that guy's name? MC Plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I think my dad's gonna buy this building and turn it into a Starbucks or a Soul Cycle. Uh, oh, so I'm sorry. Is Carla mad at you? I hope she's not mad at you. There's no reason for her to be mad at anybody. Why do I Carla's coming after me, but she knows. Why? What she knows? I'm on Team Carla. She knows I represent Team Carla. You really do. I you do. do jump on. You do jump on the pink team a lot, bro. Um, yo, dude, I'm all pink, bro. We're all pink on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your T-shirt. I'm Dan Soder, and we're all pink on the inside. I, I, I could even guess what she's mad at. Sure I don't know. That's Whatever. my new. That's my do? new slogan. But you said you have a call. I don't have a call screen because I'm just too busy up on the internet. Andy, uh, Andy, if you want to get into it, we can get into it. <laughs> you want to um, go, bro? Yeah. I know you don't. You're not we, good at. I know you're not proficient at hand-to-hand combat. 
Well, I don't want to. I don't want to stifle oh, anybody's it. opinion. I don't want to stifle anybody's opinion. We have Elizabeth in St. Louis. Elizabeth, says, uh, yeah. Says I'm be, says I'm being petty. Knows. Yeah, you want to talk should, about yeah, being yeah. petty? Yeah, you're she a very to tough love. You're a very small part of macho madness. I assume she wants to tough love me, or maybe she just wants to yell at me. I don't know. Elizabeth. One sec. Lizzie. Hold on. Merc face is doing something. See, Merc face got all. He got yeah, you his. You me up now. <laughs> He got his dick all swole. <laughs> Go. Hi, Elizabeth. Three Stooges. Hey, Elizabeth. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, Thank you. The only reason I was I was calling in because apparently I'm invested in your relationship. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Eight people knew about what happened with the whole embarrassing you and she was drinking, right? Yeah. And then you had to tell the whole world and humiliate her, right? Well, I mean, if this is the whole world, we'd be making a lot more. We'd be making a lot more money if it was the whole world. Oh yeah, we'd have, we'd have way bigger than just billboard, <laughs> billboards that change after five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> we we told people who were able to catch five seconds of a digital billboard. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying, Elizabeth. Yeah, um, absolutely. I should. I wanted to get. There was no other way. What was the other recourse of that? Just uh, I said before, my my. Instinct is to like, if somebody makes me feel shitty, I go. I want to make them feel shitty for a little bit. Even Christine. Yeah, especially Christine. You know what, Elizabeth? Let me let me say some. Let me explain my side of this in one second about what I'm saying, and to give it some perspective at all. And I'm saying this, by the way. I'm sure you're a beautiful girl. I'm not uh, trying to trivialize you at all. Let's just say you're in that situation with. you know, there's you and a, your boyfriend or husband and a guy and a girl that he used to fuck in a room and in a drunken situation, not just pointing out to everybody in the room and a, and a bunch of strangers and whoever that, oh, these here's two here's two girls that I fucked, but not saying not not only nothing positive about you, but instead just going like, oh man, like. And her tits were so much better than Elizabeth's, man. And it's just like I used to have a really great time uh, fucking her. So you that's it. That, that, that's kind of the only like there was nothing there was even there wasn't even like a drunken like positive like well I'm with Jay now and that's great and you know that was like a drunken hookup or anything it was just like this love song about fucking it was very weird but uh, but did you, but Jay did you like um I keep thinking yeah, of the scene talk. I keep the I keep thinking of the scene from Seinfeld where you're like but what about the risotto. She's like, well, the risotto. <laughs> what about the risotto? I, yeah, I was full after the risotto. Jay does that with Christine. What about the sex? I yada yada. The, yeah, I I talked about you yada yada the sex. Well, I want to let I want to let Elizabeth. Do you understand that, Elizabeth? Does that, does that put any perspective on it? Here's huh? the deal. She's off the reservation, right? I mean, you have arguments with your significant other, and things happen. You apologize and you move on. The petty shit is really, you had to drive around the airport. Did that make you feel better? Did that make your penis bigger or you feel less embarrassed about what happened when you were in front of her? No. That was just shit. I would make her, I would make, I would make her drive around the country if it would make my dick bigger. (laughs) You'd make her run, you'd make her run like Forrest Gump. Just keep running. (laughs) I would just have her marathon the country if it would just give three quarters of an inch to my dumb dong. <laughs> she just keeps um, I was uh, when I was hungry, I ate. When I was tired, I slept. And when I thought about Jay's <laughs> dick, well, I From lied. that point on, <laughs> anywhere I went, I was running. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I'll say this, Elizabeth. I do agree with you. I see the pettiness in it, but also as a comedian, sure. I see the hilariousness in it. Yeah, honestly, honestly, God. Uh, uh, on that thing, Elizabeth, really, at the end of the day, it was like a pretty no harm, no. I mean, like, you know, whatever. She well. circled the airport for a while. I mean, like, <laughs> she really, she made such a scene about, like, uh, she doesn't seem to fuck up anything that would involve, like, she doesn't seem to miss alarms when she has to get up to do something that's important. I told her she didn't have to get me from the airport to begin with. And she made a whole thing of she was going to be there, so I didn't set up any other transportation to get out of there. And, I, and it was just fucking pretty shitty. I just been, I was on a crazy, crazy weekend of travel. Yeah. I really could, uh, people, I could have figured that out. So at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, it was an under, a total under of an hour excursion, Elizabeth. I, I was, you know, what? I knew she was going to find out that I wasn't there. I'm assuming, right? You Say again? never messed up with her. With Christine? I mean, we just all fucked up. My point is, mm. you're being a little on, petty. Wait. Either get over Let what she said or don't. Well, yeah, that's fair. 
<laughs> I mean, I just think she's cool. She's super nice to you. She obviously loves you. You obviously love her. We're having a therapy session here, and I'm just, all I'm saying is, like, no more petty shit. Like, if I were her, I'd be rip shit at you. <sighs> yeah. Right well, hold on real quick, Elizabeth. Just one I dare her second. to be angry at me. One I second. dare her Elizabeth. to be angry at me. Hold on a second, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth saying very practical things. Yeah, welcome back to Relationship Therapy with Randy and Elizabeth. <laughs> Teaching you how to deal with all your insecurities. Um, I was, I was going to say, uh, it really is. Therapy macho man and couples yeah. therapy yeah. should welcome, be a real thing. Welcome back to couples therapy with the macho man and Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth yeah. only. Write down all of your problems and put them in a bag and bury yeah. them in the backyard. This right here is a punching pillow. Yeah, you're going to punch the pillow to get out all of your aggressions. Have you ever been reborn again? We're going to do the rebirthing process. Yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> I don't, but in, in Jay's defense, Elizabeth, uh, especially with the travel thing, I don't think people realize when you're jumping around like that, you kind of get a little frayed and fucked up a little bit. And so the anger was probably a lot more than it would have just normally been had it been you went to a club for three days and flew home, you know? Sure. Yeah, I can't. No, absolutely. Like yeah, so, it was pretty nutty. And I said, foreigners, like, she made such a stink that she was going to be there. I mean, when I was like, you don't have to be there. I said, like, I'll just take an Uber or whatever from the, from the, she's like, no, I want to be there. She goes, we've had a rough week. I know I'm in the doghouse a little bit and I fucked up. So it's kind of funny. It's like so much there for her to like, to say, that's why I use the example I said before, my dad didn't see my daughter for five, her first five years of her life. And his first words to her where he could have had that moment was, uh, ironically was uh you must be little elizabeth and her name's isabella so you know what i mean it's like that kind of thing where it's like jesus christ like though you could have just showed up to the airport on time and it all could have or, or at all yeah and it could have been just like you know at, we would because by the way we were we contacted all week and i was you know i sent her like little clippets of stuff from like the rock on the range show we weren't like uh, at each other's throats or anything yeah you I, was were just... little I was just kind of bumming about that that whole thing fucking happened there's no real recourse except for me to like tell the story and at least kind of put it out there and that's therapeutic to me in that regard you know yeah i, I mean so i totally she, she I had that she had that she had that moment to kind of come through this morning and she just fucking blew it big time well that's the whole thing is that you were you were a little bummed about it and then and the promise of picking you up at the airport of doing a nice thing and falling through on that almost i see the frustration in like that was a double setup to fuck up uh um, yeah to, to, to kind of in a way it was more of a letdown to, to 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 recommend it like that and then but also to to uh, you know to def to play devil's advocate and to play it on Christine's side it's like there's not a worse you deal. do have a small dick Jay <laughs> yeah. yeah well I'm sorry you you call whatever you call that front pig's tail uh yeah just don't trash it I mean but this play devil's advocate here you do have a pretty small dick Jay. <laughs> I mean to to play devil's advocate the guy she fucked has a monster log so no Dr. but I'm dick saying O'Donnell. but I'm saying uh like I've been in that wake up late and miss your alarm clock when you're supposed to be doing a favor and that like panic that just doesn't go away so that there is like uh you know a little bit of empathy as far as like waking up when you're trying to do a good deed and you're like Fuck. also also elizabeth do you um when you get hammered are you like a different person I, that I, I mean i christine's not the only person i've known in the world who gets like that but i i don't i have low sympathy for that because i don't get like that i don't become a different human being like there's no level of drunk where i would uh completely like humiliate her like that in front of people there's none like where i would just do that like on a drunken like out of nowhere like there's no problem and all of a sudden i just start like just like di just dogging her out in front of a bunch of people i, I would never get like that it's, it, it seemed like it was something very uh internal that was like brewing up like some kind of anger at me or some kind of resentment or something that i could i couldn't guess what but I mean, like, uh, it was very, it was very out of nowhere attack where it was just like, thought we were having a great night. We went out to dinner before the show. We were having, a, you know, a, a great weekend. Like, yeah, so it's as funny. It was that... very, that's what I'm saying. So it was very like, there's that thing. Like, it's, I, I don't have a lot of, um, I don't have a lot of forgiveness in me for like the, oh, well, I was drunk. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't, I've, I've, I've never, I've never been drunk and lost. I've never been drunk and completely lost in my own self like that. What'd you before. say, Elizabeth? Elizabeth? I'm sorry. I said, aren't you friends with soda for Christ's sake? Soda, you used to get absolutely trashed. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. No, but soda, 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 
He yeah. said Soder was not a uh, Soder did not change his personality. He just exactly. made him like way to try to buoyant and happy. Way to try Soder to was us never against each other, Elizabeth. He actually, Soder, would get, Soder, Soder would get hammered, but he never had to wake up the next morning and be like, "What did I say? I would what always did say, I do? You know what I would do? I would say just super nice things. I would get hammered and be yeah. like, "Yeah, I'll do your show at Bushwick at five p.m." And I'd wake up and be like, "Oh fuck, oh, oh dude, I'm that guy too." I gotta go. You know what? I probably don't say it enough, Mark Norman, but you yeah. are really one of the funniest guys. Is working today. I know we're, <laughs> I know we're, I know we're, I know we're things doing, like that, man. That get me. I know we're doing a one nighter together, but seriously, write down my social security. Write down my social security. <laughs> I want you to have my social. I, I, Elizabeth, I change. I didn't change though. That's what Jay's talking about. I was just more of a slap happier version of myself because I've seen people change, and I've had ex girlfriends who have done that. One of my ex girlfriends from a, a, lo- a long time ago, she was such a sweetheart, but she would get hammered and just be with like start looking for fights. Well, just, Nate Bargatze okay. slowed down drinking because it would change his oh, personality. I, oh, I love Red State Nate. Red this, State Nate, this, yeah. This, but this Kurt I, Kurt I, by the way, Red, 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 Red State Nate was funny for sure. But I'm saying, like, at the point it was it was a very different human being than Nate Bargatze we know, you know, sober. What if? The day. <laughs> what if you? Felt That's so- what I'm saying. It's a very. It's like so. It's like I, again, I, I don't have like, and then maybe it's because I, I don't have any sympathy for it because I don't have any. Uh, I, I don't have any like basis of, of knowing what that's like. I couldn't understand why you can get that lost. I mean, I've been drunk enough to be like, you know, passing out. And still in that passing out, I still haven't been the guy who's been like, you know, you know what, man? Hitler actually had some pretty good ideas. And then like conk out. Jay, yeah, you said some crazy shit last night right before you went to bed. Like what? (laughs) Mostly that you were super down with female circumcision. Uh, It was kind of a weird thing. It's not really. But you know what's funny about that is it would be even better if you found some leather bound journal of Christine's that just had all your eyes cut out and pictures of you and like just all this hate scroll. And you're like, hey, are you holding on to something you're not telling me about? She's like, no. Oh, I'm gonna have a couple drinks, then say some shit in front of some people. <laughs> but Elizabeth, to be fair, yeah, you're right. I have to get over it. But you know, I, I kind of, I think I deserve to do that on my timeline a little bit. I, I agree. I, I just called in because I thought it was pretty hilarious that she fucked up, and like we're gonna hear about it on the show for like the next two months. Uh, no, no, no. It's not gonna be that. It won't be. A, it won't be interesting for two months. Yeah, we got, we got, <laughs> we got 19 minutes left on this pony. And one break. Yeah, we're trying. We're just trying. We're just trying. Yeah, believe me, I don't want to bore everyone with. uh, But you know, but I think what I love about doing radio, man, is you let people into your world a little bit. You know what I mean? And sure, after the show, I'm invested. Is Christine? Is Christine going to be upset? Is Carla going to come? to take Dan off at the knees, yeah, probably. She, she gonna, She's closer to him. I'm across the country. Yeah, she might Klebold and Harris me in the fucking hallways <laughs> of fucking Syria. Just come through, just putting put machine gun bullets in everyone. Yeah, she just she fucking trench coat mafias our entire staff. Jacob's like, not me though, Carla. She's like, do you know? You do you know live. where Dan so? Yeah, do you know where Dan Soder is? Uh, who's Dan Soder? Yeah, she looks like the Terminator in Terminator One, where he goes in the police office. <laughs> it's just like, I'll I'm be lo- back. I'm looking for Dan Soda. Oh, he's in Studio Twelve. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. I do more of um, fuck the guy from The Simpsons, Wolf. Ba- uh, Wolf Gang. Wolf. Ba- no. Rainier Wolf Castle. Yeah, Rainier Wolf Castle. Thank you guys. That's why you're there, Jacob. Do we have to do one more break? All right, Jacob. So, Jay, I think your physical presence in the studio stops Jacob from being as aggressive as he is, because he's really yeah. you're he's, too Gumby body. He's not afraid of you. Yeah, he's like, I can get inside and just do some real damage. Jay, I'd have to, <laughs> Jay, I'd have to pepper with outside shots until he got fatigued. <laughs> he's like, oh. uh, <laughs> Jacob, be. She could be biting my kneecaps while I power bomb him. Uh, yeah, he would hope that you just get tired. He would rope a dope you. Me, <laughs> me, he's willing to go. He's willing to go crisp. He knows that I know about his torso, his, his core strength. He gets loud. He's like, I said break, assholes, 15 hey, minutes ago. Hey, big head, your special's <laughs> over. Guess what? You, you named it right. You're not special. So go to break, you fucking waterhead. <laughs> Elizabeth, thanks for checking in. That's yeah. why I said I took your call. I don't want I don't want to ice anybody out of the conversation who takes Christine's side. I, I'm I'm more than okay with and that. And remember, Elizabeth, uh, I started hashtag forgive Christine. Yeah, he did. And don't hate me. I love you. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for Take calling. Care. All right, we'll be right back. It's the bonfire. We all know sleep is important. You want to know how to make your sleep great? Come to a Sleep Number store. The only place you'll find the Sleep Number bed with Sleep IQ technology. And right now, you can save $500 in their Memorial Day Special Edition bed 
with Sleep IQ technology, so you have the knowledge to adjust for your best night's sleep. My sleep number setting, 75. You know it's a brick. I keep it hardcore. <laughs> the sleep number bed lets me choose my ideal firmness and change it. And because it adjusts on each side, it's the perfect bed for arguing couples. When you add optional Sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep so you know how to adjust for your best night's sleep. Whether it's adjusting my sleep number setting, cutting back on caffeine, or exercising more. You know what's working because the Sleep IQ inside the bed tells you. Again, my sleep number setting, 75 hardcore. Hurry in now and save $500 on a Memorial Day special edition bed with Sleep IQ technology. You'll only find sleep number at a sleep number store. No better sleep. Find your sleep number setting at any of our 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com and be sure and tell them that Jay and Dan sent you. And now back to the bonfire with Big Jay Okerson and Dan Soder. You do no wrong, Lou. I love this. Oh, Ugh. oh I miss for DJ Lou. Ugh. I told him to play a different song, but then everything got caught up. Oh, I wanted to come back with Biggie. Hit it now. Play I Got a Story to Tell. Play it. Play it in song, Lou! <laughs> I just Lou! Like, I just like doing that because Lou is unflappable. Lou! Who y'all talking to, man? Do you know the guy, you know the Nick he's talking about is? That's why I brought it up. It's fucking Anthony Mason. Anthony Mason, People dude. One of them 6'5". <laughs> yeah. See the though I'm cool as a fan, got a hell. I don't want to blast the man, but I will do. I don't know, I will do. Cause I'm ill do. Even though I come asleep, I don't know. Even though the night cold, got me caught in sleep, you know. Cause I got a head cold. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I got the money and the two words. I'm gone. East Coast. I am. Um, it's East Coast. Yeah, hold on real quick. East Coast rap. Um. Monday on the Bonfire Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. Big Jokerson uh, in Los Angeles. I'm Dan Soder. I'm in New York. What's up? What's California up? Dream. And uh, I just want to tell people, I feel bad the people on their hold here that are like, kind of like saying they're taking my side or whatever in this. I, I'm not taking those calls. Long I, look, I'm not trying to get somebody to call. <laughs> I think I'm setting up a situation for a guy to be like, your chick's a fucking bitch, bro. And I'm like, oh, don't do that. It's or, my girlfriend. Or too. you keep going down this rabbit hole. Guy's like, hey, man, uh, how you doing? Uh, I live in... Uh, I live in Oklahoma City, and I uh, I take care of problems. So uh, ten grand, <laughs> yeah, ten grand. You want her out? You, <laughs> you want, want her out? You, her want, out? you want her out? Um, we do have a call that I really want to take, though. Um, yeah, our call. We did two calls today. To two uh, ladies, Michelle in California. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How are Hi, you, Michelle? I'm fantastic. Great. You are so bubbly. Yeah, really. I want to meet this girl. She sounds like she sounds like a real person to drag out of a funk. Yeah. I also Hi. I feel like she's like a booster from a college that tries to get kids yeah. to play football there. Things are gonna be great when you get here. Oh, you guys are gonna learn so much and experience so much. You need to come to the University of Florida. Because we have a great textile program. Um, Michelle, you, Jay earlier before the break said that um, that's part of radio is bringing up your person your personal stuff and kind of letting people in. I think it's part of a certain kind of radio. I think we're trying to connect. We're, we uh, we're yeah. we're touring, traveling comedians. We connect with our fans. That's part of a big thing of it. Absolutely, and we kind of like keeping Absolutely. it transparent. And. Um, have, I, I'm kind of reacting to what Elizabeth said about how Christine might be mad about what you're saying on the radio, but pretty much your life is an open book when you are part of one half of a personality. Yeah. And you have to just suck it up and, and say, I mean, if you don't want something to be on the radio, you either have to say, don't put it on the radio, or you just don't do it. Now, <laughs> now, you're saying, and, now you're saying this why? Uh, I'm saying this, I... My former relationship, I was married to a man who was a local radio personality in the town that I lived in. Everybody knew him. Because of that, everybody knew me. And so anytime you go out, you're always on because there's always fans. Who are you? And can we can we guess who you were dating? Was it Shadow Stevens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? No, 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 no. It was a Santa Barbara radio station. It was many, 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 many years ago. But Casey Kasem. <laughs> Did you fuck Dick Clark? Were you fucking Dick Clark back when he was doing that? 
<laughs> were, you, <laughs> were you dating Bobcat and the kid? Who were you dating? Was it the Frank were show? Getting, were you getting spit roasted by Mark and Brian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming back to the only classic rock station in Santa Barbara. My bitch of a wife is sleeping at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and I'm in early today because she fought off another pillow attack while she was dead asleep. <laughs> I tried putting her six feet in the ground. I want to take my son and dye my hair. Coming back. With, coming back. With, coming back. We're going to get the let out. When we come back, we got mandatory Metallica coming at you. Real first thing, though, I live with a bloodless ice monster. Real quick before we go into today's top five, I would just like to say you borrow my car, you bring it back with no gas, and it has two new scratches on it, you dumb whore. All I'm saying is bring it back the way you found it. 64 degrees inland, around 55 on the coast, and I was letting you know that my wife has 20, a gaping vagina. Gaping 20, vagina. 20 minute delays going into the tunnel, and we're getting ready to get the let out with a little daze there. And confused. Yay. Also, my wife's brother borrowed another five thousand dollars off me because she comes from a family of carnival people. <laughs> 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 Shit. Well, looks like my mother-in-law's got to stay for another month because she's lonely and apparently gets sick when it's too cold where she lives. Yeah. And it doesn't make me happy looking at what my wife's going to turn into in 10 years. So here's a little Zeppelin. I'm going to go have a drink. It's 7.15 in the morning. Anyway, here comes a little Rob Thomas and Santana coming at you. <laughs> my Hogga Harlem Senorita. <laughs> I'm fucking sweating. Uh, dude, that was fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, you know, Michelle, I have to say, um, and, and in fairness, I'd say if Christine said to me, and I'm not saying what I would do, you know, ultimately for sure, but I mean, like, if she came at me with a really, like, could you please not talk about this on radio, uh, I would consider not talking about it for sure. I, pro I probably would lean more towards not talking about it. Yeah. But I think one. Well, you know, if, if if I got if I got to compliment her at all during this uh, time of not that psyched to compliment her, I will say like she kind of gets what I am and what I do. You know, what I mean, like she def definitely doesn't stifle. Yeah, that. yeah. I I would say out of exactly. all the all the girlfriends exactly. I've seen, Christine is fucking incredibly supportive. Yeah, well, you have to be, like super cool in order to be able to deal with the fact that you're with someone who's going to basically always be on. There's always going to be someone you're running into. There's always going to be someone listening to your conversations. It's just the way it is. And, she, you know... She's super supportive unless you're fans. insecure... She's very supportive unless you're insecure about your dick or need to ride home from an airport. <laughs> Outside of those two things, she is lock golden. So she's lock solid. Unless you, <laughs> unless you have a weak spot or have a timing meet up, a timed meetup. <laughs> Well, my goddamn brother-in-law borrowed another piece of lawn equipment I'm never going to see again. Anyway, this is... Oh, that's Santana with Rob Thomas. There's a combo no one was asking for. I'm just being bitter. It's, it's Friday at 8 in the morning. Here's a little Rob Thomas. I'm going to need it to get through my weekend where I'm going to see my loveless wife and her dumb family. <laughs> oh. Looks like we're having another barbecue for a bunch of guys I gotta call uncle that aren't my uncles. Oh. She's a real cunt. He <laughs> 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 just melts down. Oh, I think, Michelle. Oh, I think, yeah, go ahead. Super awesome. And it takes a lot of work to be in her position. However, please be careful not to humiliate you. I mean, come on. Kind of simple. You, you really, Michelle, you well, let's sound... Give credit, let's, let, let's give credit across the board, too. Let's keep in mind that Carl is an innocent victim who has to be talked about against her will all the time on the radio also. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, I was. I was. Everybody in that town knew my life. It was humiliating. So. <laughs> well, now you can live a different life of having the voice of an animated squirrel. Well, it's like they say sometimes it takes a village to it takes a village to teach one dumb chick to pick a guy up when she says you're going to pick him up. <laughs> well, it looks like your looks like your lesson of loitering, your punishment of making her loiter, did not enough. It's stuck. 
She goes, she goes, I think they're going to make me leave and not let, let me leave the car here in front of the airport. I go, you're fine. Yeah. You know what you should do is scream Allah Akbar as you're, like, <laughs> as you're walking away from the, you know what you should do? Plug your ears and wince as you walk away from the car. Hey, ask the security guy if he's seen a package here. Yeah. You should ask, uh, you should ask, uh, see if there's a military, any military there and then ask them if they believe in Allah. If there is only one true Allah. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, Jay, what happened to Christine? You're like, oh, she's gone for a while. I think she's in a secret prison in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Michelle, you your, the... voice, your voice just cheered up the whole show. Thank it really you so did. much for calling, sweetie. What a ray of sunshine. Oh, thank you. I love you guys. You guys are hilarious. I listen whenever my kids aren't in the car. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, that's, t- fair. that's fair enough. Fair t- enough. T- tell your kids to stop being dorks and start listening to our <laughs> radio show. <laughs> Grow up, nerds. <laughs> Yeah, two plus wow. two is four, and one plus you equals loser. Listen to our show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we love you, Michelle. Thanks, Thanks so much for Michelle. calling. Oh, Jay, what a fun cross-country show we had today. So fun. Um, good luck. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you are just a drive away from Carla's wrath. Yeah. There's I'm gonna, no way she can get to me. I'm I have a week. I have a week at least to train. I'm wearing the ghillie suit home. <laughs> so she can't see me. She can't see my movements. I'll tell you what. If she ever turns Isabella against me, that's one big sum bitch right there. <laughs> she could throw hands. Uh, <laughs> that, kid, that kid's going to give you a run for the money. Yeah. I tried to put her in a figure four leg lock. It's like goddamn trying to bend a tree. <laughs> um, for all tour dates, Big J Comedy. Dot com, DanSoder.com, at Big J Okerson on Twitter, at Dan Soder on Twitter, also at The Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, what's up with tickets if, for uh, This Is Not Happening? Are they good on people if, for tomorrow? I'm not sure. Uh, Christine will post something. Yeah, Christine I mean, will post it. She says she's going to. I don't maybe, know if she's Maybe going. she'll make it a bigger post than normal. That post must be about that other guy. <laughs> um, she's going to, uh, yeah, she'll probably put a post up for um, uh, for the tickets to tomorrow night's taping. I'm the 730 taping for This Is Not Happening. Yeah. Tonight, if you're, now, if you're in the L.A. area at the uh, Lyric Theater, on La Brea, I'm doing the goddamn comedy jam. Fuck That's yes, go fun. see that. It's one of the most fun shows in the world to watch. And then if you're uh, in w- Winnipeg, Canada, I'm going to be at Rumors. Uh, Canada. This, yeah, this Thursday through Saturday. So come out to I'll the also, show. I'll also be at the Comedy Store and the, the Improv on Wednesday night and the yeah. Comedy Store Thursday and Friday. So it's going to be yeah. just a kicking it week here. Yeah. But we'll be here talking to you again, motherfuckers, on Wednesday. Yeah, another cross-country bonfire coming up on Wednesday. You guys have a good one. Love y'alls. Bye.